In this problem, you're carrying a block up an incline, um, and there's friction between the block and the incline. You're applying a force of 10 newtons, and you're asked to find uh, the average power exerted um, during this um, motion. So it's really important that you know that it's average power, um, and so it's across the whole time interval. Uh, and you're assuming that this block starts rest and um, you end up with a um, final velocity. Okay, so the first thing we do is we start with a free body diagram of the block. Um, so on the block, um, there are um, there's a friction force, there's a, no well, a normal force and a friction force, um, and then there's um, the force due to gravity, and F, which pulls the block um, up the incline. So we're going to draw those. Uh, so we have, at the center of gravity, we have Fg. Then we have force F acting on pulling up the block. So this is just F. Then we have along uh, the bottom surface, well, perpendicular to the bottom surface, we have the normal force. Um, and then we have the force of friction, which is going to point backwards uh, because the motion is up the incline. Um, so f of f will point backwards um, opposite to the motion. Uh, and then we also, um, regarding the kinetic diagram, we have an acceleration pointing upwards um, because this block is going to accelerate. Okay? Uh, and everything is sloped at an angle of theta. So this angle here is theta. Okay, so now that we have our free body diagram, we can actually um, calc do a sum of forces in the x and y direction. Now for simplicity, I'm going to direct my coordinate system along the incline. So x is up the incline, and y is um, perpendicular to that. Um, just for simplicity, um, because um, this coordinate system is going to allow me to add these forces in just one direction instead of splitting all these forces into two directions if it was um, um, another coordinate system. The only force I have to split up into two components is this FG force, um, but it's just one compared to three other ones. Okay, so let's do a force balance in X. So the sum of forces in X is going to be equal to uh, m a g x okay um, because we said we're going to have an acceleration um, a g x which in this case will just be a okay so when we implement this we get um, f pulling upwards so there's force here pulling along the x direction and then we have negative f of f pulling uh, backwards so minus uh, f of f and then we have this f g sine theta term because this f g um, there's a sine theta term that points backwards, um, so minus fg or fg sine theta is going to be equal to m a. Okay, because a is our is only in the x direction. All right, then we have our sum of forces in the y direction. Um, which is going to be equal to zero because this there's not going to be an acceleration in the y direction because it, the block is not going to detach from the surface. Uh, so we have n minus fg cos theta is going to be equal to zero. So here we have again n pointing upwards and minus fg cos theta because that points downwards. Okay. So here we can directly solve for n. We have fg cos theta, right? Um, fg is just mg, um, and theta we know, so we can directly solve for n. So from here, we get that n is equal to fg cos theta, which equals to mg cos theta, um, which is going to be equal to 1 kilogram times 9.81 meters per second squared times cos of 30 degrees. So 
n equals to um, 8.496 newtons. Okay, so now we have n, and if we go to the above equation here, we um, have um, we can find f of f from n because the force of friction f of f is going to be equal to mu k n. Um, and we have fg sine theta. We're given f so we can find the acceleration a. Okay, so um, let's do that. So from this equation here, from 1, we get that f minus mu k n minus f g, or actually I'm going to replace f g with m g, m g sine theta is equal to m a. So we get that a is equal to uh, f minus mu k n minus m g sine theta over m. So a is going to be equal to um, 10 newtons minus 0 0.2 times 8.496 newtons minus 1 kilogram times 9.81. Let me move everything backwards. 81 meters per second squared times sine of 30 degrees over one kilogram. So we can solve for A, at that A is equal to 3.395, 96 actually, meters per second squared. Okay, so this is the acceleration of the block along X. All right, now that we have this, um, we have uh, the acceleration of the block, um, and um, we can find uh, the um, time taken to travel the distance of three meters, okay? So this acceleration is gonna be constant throughout the whole system because the force is constant and all the forces are constant throughout this whole motion. Um, so given this acceleration, we can find the time that it takes for this block to travel the desired distance of three meters, okay? So um, this is um, the equation that we'll use. Uh, the distance traveled, delta S, is gonna be equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half a t squared. Okay, where a is the acceleration and t squared is the time. So delta s in our case will be three meters because that's our desired distance of travel. V naught is zero, so this term cancels. Um, zero plus one half times acceleration, which we just found 3.396 meters per second squared times t squared. Okay, so this equation, we can directly solve for time. And um, if we solve this quadratic equation, we got that t is equal to 1.329 uh, seconds. Okay, so now we have the time that it takes, and we're trying to find the time because um, th this, um, we need to um, find, we need to have a time for a power because uh, when we're trying to find the work or the energy expended, that uh, is independent of time, but power um, is the energy over the time. So that's why we're looking at the time, um, because we're trying to look at power, not just the energy expended. If we had to just find the energy expended, we would have to, we would just multiply the force times the distance, um, but in this case, um, we need to look at time because we need to find the watts, not just joules okay so now we have our time in which um, this is expended uh, all this energy is expended 
Um, and we can uh, find the change in velocity um, of uh, this um, block. And once we find the change in velocity, then we can use the change in velocity multiplied by a force, and that would be our power. Okay? So um, that's why we need to find this change of velocity. And the change of velocity, so delta v is equal to a change in distance over um, a change in time, right? Um, so distance over displacement over time is velocity. Um, so this is going to be equal to 3 meters divided by, we are just found our time, 1.329 seconds. And this is going to be equal to uh, 2.257 uh, uh, meters per second. Okay. So this is the change in velocity that the block undergoes to travel this distance of uh, three meters, okay? Um, and once we have this, we can quickly find power. So uh, the power is equal to uh, the force times uh, the velocity. Uh, so again, to write it more formally, the change in power is equal to force delta V. Um, and we have delta V, and we also have our force, which is 10 newtons. So we can equate this to 10 newtons times 2.257 meters per second, which equals to 22.57 watts. So the power is equal to 22.57 watts, and that is our final answer. Now there's also an alternate way of uh, solving this question, which might be easier and um, more intuitive. So we know that, so alternatively, we have that power is equal to some work over some time, okay? Now the work is the work that you put into the system. So in this case, it will be a force times a distance. And this is the force applied, which is 10 newtons, times the distance of three meters. So if we do this, we get 30 joules. So we expend 30 joules. Um, and the time which this takes place is given, we've already found it, 1.329 seconds. So um, 30 joules over uh, 1.329 seconds is going to be equal to the same number, 22.57 watts, which matches. So this is an alternate way of finding uh, the power.